In this edition of INN CEO Talks, I'm joined by Greg Robb, the president and CEO of Helium Evolution. Greg, welcome back. Hi, glad to be back with you again. You know, we last talked in March, <laughs> and so it's been a, quite a number of months, and I was pretty excited by, uh, back then about what you're doing in Saskatchewan. Let's bring viewers back up to speed about what you're doing uh, and the work that you're doing in this very, very interesting helium space. Um, well, back in March, we had just gone public, and uh, so we had raised some money, and uh, we're buying seismic and putting together a land position. Uh, subsequent to that, um, we raised more money um, and drilled a couple wells, which uh, were interesting. Um, uh, not didn't find completely what we were looking for, but got a lot of good hints and a lot of good data. Um, and then following that, North American Helium, uh, in our second financing, took part in that financing and also farmed in uh, to drill a number of wells on our land. So that's probably the biggest development. Uh, North American Helium, we have now have a deal with them where they will drill between five and eight wells um, over the next uh, sort of 12 to 18 months. Uh, they drilled one, um, and they'll be getting ready to drill another one before the end of the year. Um, a couple in the spring, and then uh, a few more in the summer. And, uh, and with that uh, comes... Uh, about probably 60, 80 kilometers of new seismic. Um, so we're, we're in the data gathering stage of this play at this point um, and, and kind of following the leader, really. You know, for a lot of people who uh, follow the mining space, they go, okay, you drill, you pull a core out, you wait for uh, the assay results. What's the process when you're drilling for helium? Um, it's, <laughs> it's a little more... Uh, it's a little bit different than that. I mean, we, we, it's more like conventional oil and gas exploration in terms of uh, how quickly you uh, can ascertain whether you have anything. Uh, so you drill um, and you log it with conventional uh, logging tools uh, like in oil and gas and you, you look for gas, in this case helium gas with, uh, with nitrogen. And uh, and then you case the well. The, the production end of it is, is a little bit more convoluted. The processing is, is specialized. Um, so you don't have to wait as long as, as in a mining type of operation to get results or to bring them on production. Um, but it still takes about 12 months prior or following a discovery to, to bring a helium uh, discovery on production. Um, as I mentioned, part of our deal with, with North American Helium um, is that they're going to be drilling a number of exploration wells on our land. They also have production facilities at hand. Um, so should they make a discovery, um, the idea is that they'll go to development quickly and to production quickly. Um, now, typically, uh, because of the, the amount of control or the, the amount of data in this play, it, it's very early days. Um, we would expect on the exploration side that they would hit, oh, on the order of one in one in three, one in four, um, and this is with uh, a heavy seismic uh, uh, database to, to be drilling on. Um, when they do get discoveries, they tend to drill three to five development wells. So of the eight wells they're going to drill for us, we're expecting a success of maybe two or three and then development to follow up on that. And then that will keep us busy going into uh, the, the second half of 2023. What are the plans for 2023, uh, first and second half of the year? Uh, the beginning of the year, we're, we're following on the, the farm in with uh, North America and they'll be drilling. We're acquiring seismic, uh, so we're building our database and we're modeling with uh, the wells that we'll be drilling with them and the wells that are coming off uh, confidential status, uh, their wells and other other operators. Um, we expect that we'll be drilling again probably in the, the second half of 23. Um, so our, our program is that we're going to put together a, 
a pool of targets. Uh, we're aiming to get, say, 10, 12 targets, and then we'll high grade uh, the best opportunities and then start drilling again in the second half of 23. Um, I would expect that we'll drill three or four um, through the second half of 23, and then you get back into the seismic operations in the winter. In the meantime, North American, based on on their success, we think they'll have they'll have some success. Uh, they typically do. Uh, then we'll have some development opportunities there, and and we're hoping that uh, by about this time next year, we we could have cash flow coming out of those operations. So for investors right at the moment, what's your message? Because you've already got North American that is working with you, um, and this looks like a very interesting time. What? Why now for investors? Well, the stock is very cheap. Um, uh, our market cap at the current time is about about $25 million. Uh, we've got $10 million in cash. North American Sparm in, uh, is going to put their spending at somewhere around 20 million. Um, based on their stats, we, we think there will be development that will come out of that and we're able to fund that. Um, so we think it's undervalued at this current price. With the current prices of the product uh, being, uh, well, we saw a, a recent um, contract that NASA uh, took for a two-year supply of helium in excess of $1,000 in MCF. Uh, but we're running our economics at about $450 U.S. in MCF. Um, the numbers are very robust, and they, they certainly justify the, uh, the, the risk ec economics that we're running. So um, I think that it's, it's a good time to get in. Um, maybe uh, take advantage of some year-end uh, tax loss selling and the general malaise in the markets. Um, because the, the next sort of six months are going to be when a lot of activity is going to take place. You know, uh, even though we touched on this in our last interview, a lot of people may not understand the important relationship between helium and computing science or the computing uh, industry, uh, aerospace, and so on. Bring us up to speed and tell us, first of all, what the applications are, but also the fact that there is tremendous and growing pressure uh, to identify and secure new sources of helium. Well, there's, there's uh, several things you touch on there. Um, helium is a critical product for the manufacture of a, a lot of high-tech components, particularly microchips, uh, but also fiber optics. It's used in space exploration, MRI machines, and uh, all those areas are growing and, and growing rapidly. Um, with the chip sector, there's also the, the reshoring uh, developments that we're seeing where the United States uh, wants to bring back a lot of... Uh, chip manufacturing to the U.S. So uh, Intel is building a big plant in Ohio that's been announced and the government uh, in the U.S. has put up I think 50 billion in incentives to uh, bring chip manufacturing. Um, the Canadian government has an initiative to, to uh, develop chips in Canada for the auto sector in Ontario. So helium is needed uh, to make those chips. They have to be in an ultra clean environment and uh, Helium is a, is a key component. Um, in, in terms of the, the geopolitical aspects, the onshoring is to, is to have a safe manufacturing of, of your, your key products, but also there's the, the, the Russian angle that, uh, there's Russian helium that is missing from the market currently. And we don't know when that'll be, uh, be able to reach the market again. And with a, a component as important as a critical mineral like helium, um, with what we've seen in, in, uh, in Europe this year uh, regarding energy, I mean, it might make it pretty tricky for, uh, for suppliers to, or to, for companies and countries to take their su supplies of a critical uh, element like helium. So the more we can produce uh, locally or in North America, the better for us. And the United States currently is about 30% of uh, all helium demand. With this onshoring, uh, that should only increase. Yeah, so it's a very interesting time to be in this space. And yeah. I think as we touched on, it's not widely sought after, so it's, it's a rare opportunity. It's, it's, a, very, it's a niche market, no question. Um, 
the the helium market as compared to the conventional natural gas market uh, the natural gas market uh, is about uh, eight or nine thousand times larger uh, yeah. in North America so helium is a niche product and and there's things that that <laughs> That are are cause some difficulties because of that um, specialty manufacturing, specialty um, handling of the material, uh, kind of an oligopoly that's in charge of uh, the distribution of it. Uh, we're learning though; we're figuring it out. Well, it's a pretty exciting time for you and for anybody who is interested in what is happening with regards to helium. And of course, I'm wishing you great success because you're exploring here in Canada, and we want to see that. Uh, you know, North American and, and in my case, particularly Canadian uh, development. I wish you great success. Thank you very much. Uh, onward and upward. Yes. Thanks for your time today. All right.